Hi, I'm Laura Cram, and welcome to Season 1, Episode 7 of the Creepy Acres Podcast, this week in Creepy History. It's our Christmas special! It's our Christmas special! Tell them it's our Christmas special! Oh my god, yes. It is our yes holiday special. <laughs> and Yes, you're damn right it is. That, my friends, is the Holly Jolly Bigfoot co-host, Sam Squatch. <laughs> or should I say, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> Ho, ho, ho. It sounds like you have a bit of a cold. Are you, are you doing okay? Yes. You sure? I do have a little cold. You do. But I'm doing okay. Okay. Just a slight, a slight cough. But you know what? I'm here with you. Thank you. I heard a little bit of a cough. You, you know, I don't know. I thought maybe, maybe you bought yourself, maybe for Christmas you bought yourself a new bong. I don't know. And I'm not here to judge. I'm just letting you know that, uh, you know, just party responsibly, you know? This stuff can be dangerous. Thank you for letting me know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... I mean, have fun. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, look, I'm no narc, uh-huh. you know, but I just wanted to let you know if, if I mean, I've heard, I hear that before. I mean, Bruce, the beast of Bray Road I hang out with, he's, a, he's a lot of like, mm-hmm. <laughs> and we all know, we all know what he's doing. We all know what he's doing. He does live the closest to me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm just saying, I mean, he's drugged to the gills. He has to be. He's an animal. He'll kill everybody. <laughs> so anyway. Anyways. Yes. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. You know what? Merry Christmas to you and a very Yeti New Year. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, thanks. So I I just want to know, I just want to know, as uh, long as we're talking about Christmas and stuff, mm-hmm. what's your favorite Christmas song? <gasps> oh, okay. So growing up, of course, it was the Chipmunks. Oh. Oh, what? Hey, nothing. Are you judging my choice? No, I would never. I would never. Yes, you are. I mean, if I'm being honest with you, I was expecting something by like NSYNC or Backstreet Boys or something like that. Or, 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 or that other very famous trio of singing brothers who also put out a, a Christmas album, you know, besides Simon, uh, Alvin, and Theodore. And that, of course, is Hanson with Ho Ho Ho. Okay, what's yours, mister? It would be Burl Ives have a, a Holly Jolly Christmas. 100%. So basic. It's so good. I don't know why. He's like, I don't know why. I trust that man. Do you? Yeah. Every time I hear him sing and he's like singing about Holly. Jo- I, maybe it's the mustache. I don't know. There's something about him. I'm like, you know what? I, I can get behind this. He makes me believe. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Everyone should believe. You know what? I believe in you. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, you know what? And I believe in you too. Yeah. Thank you. I, and I was not judging your choice. I was just, I was just shocked because. Because you were judging. Okay. So when. I was growing up, that was my favorite Christmas song, was the Chipmunks. But as I got older, um, if people don't know, I'm a huge Judy Garland fan. Like, I even have a Wizard of Oz tattoo. But one of my favorite movies, and it's not really a Christmas movie, but it kind of is. It's like an all-seasons movie, is Meet Me in St. Louis. And she's the one that originally sings Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. So that's my choice, actually, as an adult. You know what? Yes. I appreciate that thank you that is that is a wonderful choice yes thank you and i believe i believe i believe i'm not mistaken the name of the movie is meet me in st louis <laughs> it's a very common misconception that it's meet me in st louis louis no, 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 no. it's meet me in st louis i'm almost 100 percent sure even though i have never seen the movie and i have never been there i'm gonna tell you right now 100 mm-hmm. percent. even though i have no idea it is meet me in st louis even though i don't know I mean, that's how the song goes, is Meet Me in St. Louis. Oh, oh, oh! But <laughs> you're wrong. It's St. Louis. You know what? It's a great choice. You know what? All bullshit aside, I'm not going to I'm not gonna tease you tonight. It's Christmas. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's a great choice. Thank you. And I think that I think that uh, you have wonderful taste. There you go. Of course I do. I'm on this podcast. Yes. And I'm not only saying that because I'm hoping to get something awesome for Christmas from me. Have you been naughty or nice? Oh, naughty as shit. I mean, look. I, look, I, I don't... Uh-huh. Look, look, if I don't get presents from you, I'm not getting any, because Santa ain't bringing me a goddamn thing. I don't know if you know this, but last year, we, um, we, uh, me and the gang, I mean, we're not a real gang, but I do like to call my friends the gang. We, uh... Am I part of that gang? You are now. Yes. It just means you're complicit. Anyway... And probably an accessory at this point. Do we get matching jean jackets with patches? No, we're not the sharks or the jets. Jesus Christ. <laughs> we, uh, no, but we, uh, you know, Santa sent uh, one of those elves on a shelf guy. I uh, kept sending him. I did not realize 
uh, what they were. Yeah. I thought they were rats, and I killed a shit ton of them. And now I feel like uh, there is a there is a, a very large mass grave of of elves in my backyard, and I'm not proud of it. But we should link that video in the show notes so people can see what you're talking about. Well, you know what? I think we should. You know why? Because I think then they would understand it wasn't my fault. Okay. Yes. So. Yes. Sam. Yes, Laura. What's going on? What's happening? It is our Christmas holiday special. I'm very excited. So, Sam, let's turn it over to Nathaniel Leonard, and he can tell us all about our topic, (gasps) which is creepy Christmas. Yes! Oh, my God. Yes. I got to tell you, I am super excited for this. I am so excited for this because not only because Christmas is my favorite time of year, but, 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 because I hate the sound of my own voice. So one of my absolute favorite parts of this podcast is listening to that man talk. God damn, I love his voice. Me too. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know a lot about this topic. I know a little bit. So I'm always I'm always excited to learn something new. So I am very excited. Yes, it's, I, I know it's going to be spectacular. I'm very happy. Okay, let's turn it over to him and, and let's find out. Good evening. You have reached the voicemail of Nathaniel Leonard's. I am currently out of the country celebrating the holidays with my loved ones. I will be out of the office for the remainder of the year. So please leave your name, number, and a brief message at the tone. And if this is the crew from Creepy Acres waiting once again to the very last second to give me a call and ask me to do a voiceover, I would simply say this. I am done pulling rabbits out of my hat for you. And you should probably use your phone to call someone. Who gives a shit? Thank you, and see you next year. Oh, shit! Oh, oh my, my God. God. Oh, no. Oh, no. So unprofessional. I oh thought you God. told him that we needed him this week. I I thought you were going to call him. Oh, my God. This is bad. Sam, I don't have his number. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, shit. You know what? I do remember what? you tell you. I do remember you telling me to call the guy. And I didn't because I think if I remember, I had mm-hmm. to, I was doing laundry and I forgot. Shit. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. It's on me. Sam, you don't even wear clothes. Are you lying? Look, I wear scarves. All right. When I want to feel fancy. Okay. okay. Don't judge me. Oh, my God. What the hell are we going to do? We don't know anyone who knows anything about creepy Christmas shit. <sighs> oh, shit. Wait, I do. I do. What? Yeah. Who? Mr. Sam Sharon. Oh, my God. How the hell did we get him? Oh, my God. I love that guy's music. Are you fucking kidding me? How the hell did we do that? <laughs> music? What are you talking about? Oh, oh come on. So thinking out loud. Uh, uh, shape of you. Bad habits. Plus, I think you dated Taylor Swift. Oh, my God. Whoa. Oh, Sam, Sam, Sam. What? That's Ad Sharon. He's like that redheaded British musician. Oh, who the hell are we talking to? What did you say? <laughs> We're talking to the British dark artist himself, Mr. Sam Sheeran. Maybe they're brothers. <gasps> oh my God. Did he ever date Taylor Swift? I don't know. Where does he live? Well, I think he was born in England, but I think he lives in LA now. Oh, he's in LA. Well, he might have a shot. <laughs> I mean, honest to God, for a while there, she was burned through dudes like a guy with a cold burns through Kleenex. You know what I'm saying? Sam, he's the one that did the artwork for David Weatherly's book. <gasps> the covers? Yes. Oh, 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 I don't know if you know this, but I got those all over my wall. Oh, my God. This is amazing. Oh, my God. How the hell did you manage to get him? This is fantastic. Oh, 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 oh. I, you know, I, you know I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you right now. What? This is the best Christmas gift I have ever gotten. Aww. Except for the time I got Optimus Prime when I was a kid. It's a tie. Aww. All right, let's talk to Mr. Sam Sharon. Yeah. So, Mr. Sam, this is going to get very confusing after a while. So what we're going to do is, you're just going to be Sam, and I'm I'm going to bite the bullet, all right, for you, because I like you. Aww. So for tonight, Mr. Sam, you're our guest you will simply be Sam. I will allow you to be Sam, okay? And I, just for tonight, just for tonight, mm-hmm. and Laura, you can address me as Mr. Sam. <laughs> that crap. I, I'll be honest with you, I didn't really, that's not going to work. I didn't think this through. Crap. Can I call you Samwich? 
You call me sandwich. I like that. All right. Yeah. Okay. He's Sam. I'm sandwich. I like this. Okay. Here we go. So, so, so Mr. Sam, now a lot of people know you from, you know, especially in this, in this world and in, in our little realm, uh, in our corner here. Now they all know you from your, your various book covers and stuff, but I don't think people understand the breadth of your work. My God. I mean, the album covers. It's amazing. It is shocking. And I, so I'm just wondering if you could just give a rundown for the people so they can understand the, the people you have done stuff for. Cause it is, it is impressive to say the least. Yeah. Brag. Let's hear it. <laughs> well, Hey, um, thanks for having me on the show. Thanks for the invite to start with. Hi, Laura. Hi, Hi Sam. Um, yeah, I've, this is really, uh, kind of awkward really because it's kind of me just reeling off and name dropping but uh, i've done a lot of work in the realm of cryptozoology and and the paranormal for book covers as you say for um people like whitley streber uh david weatherly ken gerhard um luke phillips i just revealed a new book cover today for him um the list is endless for, for those kind of people you know various magazines the 14 times paranormality magazine and, and so on um, but uh, yeah, as you said, I do album covers and t-shirts and posters for bands as well um, with uh, previous clients, including Slayer, Ministry, Rob Zombie, Filter, Ramstein, Iron Maiden, Biohazard, American Hedgehog, Him, Orgy, the list goes on. Um, and I sort of never stop. And uh, the other day I, I realized that it'd been a number of years before I'd sort of added some of this artwork to my Facebook. So over the last week or two, I've been adding previous work to my Facebook. And I, I had to sort of sit back and, and realize that I really don't take any breaks. So yeah, it's quite a lot of stuff. I saw you did Power Man 5000 too. <laughs> yeah, Power Man 5000. Did I say American Head Charge? Probably. Yeah. Uh, but but you did not say Cradle of Filth or Ministry. Oh, no, yeah. you said Ministry. You just weren't listening. Oh, God damn it. I'm sorry. It's our guest. Come on. Sorry. So, Samuel, what are we talking about? I am sorry, Laura, but I am only answering for the remainder of this evening to the name Sandwich. Or, perhaps, Mr. Sandwich. Sandwich. Or, in a pinch, Lord Sandwich. Although that one is growing on. Okay, me. Sandwich. What are we talking about? So you do the, the, the Mary Macabre uh, creepy Christmas world of S Sam Sheeran. Uh, it, it's a card collection and playing cards uh, coming soon. Yeah, it's it and it is it is it is disturbing to say the least. But they that is some impressive stuff. Now I don't think under I don't think people understand like how messed up Christmas really is or was. I thought so. you were gonna say how messed up he was. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a good point. Um, Everyone sort of says their favorite season is Halloween, um, but uh, not for me. My favorite season is actually Christmas. And I say Christmas as a whole because it does cover a whole range of different religions from the, you know, the pagan religions and the heathen religions, as they prefer to be called because they're from the heath, um, all the way through to the, you know, the Christian side of it, where the name Christmas comes from. But as you say, people don't realize just how dark and creepy and disturbing the christmas and the winter season is it's literally the season of death um and so you know halloween it's tame halloween is a sort of happy go lucky version and then when you get to christmas if you really look into it before the commercialization of it in the 20th century with santa claus and everything we have today with television prior to this in the victorian era uh, everybody used to tell ghost stories and prior to that, people would warn people about creatures in the forest so that they wouldn't wander off or, you know, they'd tell children that there was a big horned monster that would eat them that lived in the woods just to make sure they didn't wander off. And yet there are legends of these things actually existing out there, wild men across Europe. Um, so is that Sasquatch back in the day? Maybe. Who knows? But uh, yeah, the world of creepy Christmas um, I just thought of uh, putting it all together as a series of Christmas cards and, and in a way educate people to this darker, as I would think, sort of a, a far more disturbing time than Halloween. 
oh no i could totally mm-hmm. understand this i mean where christmas is far more disturbing than halloween i mean because like because halloween is like a night you know and then it's over you know but like christmas i mean my god that shit they, they're they're putting stuff out in freaking august you know september oh yeah and 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 then it's just months and months it is like an endless gauntlet of horror it just goes on and on yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's um, it's one of those things where people, you know, they look at Santa Claus and uh, they say, "Oh yeah, the the original Santa Claus was Saint Nicholas," and 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 it goes far, far further back than that, where there were strange characters that would dress up and have these accompanying monsters. As you know, most people would look at them and call them devils, and in popular culture, some would call them Krampus, some would call them Perchton, and then there's another character called Perchta. Who's a kind of a witch type hag, and there's a multitude of versions of her as a character, and that's the interesting thing about this uh, this folklore, if you will. If you look at the creepy Christmas side of of the whole of Europe, particularly Europe, um, in every country, in every region, from town to town, the names would slightly change, as would the descriptions, and as would the sort of traditions to either keep them away or keep them happy, so that they wouldn't kidnap you or eat you. And even today, we still have processions through, you know, Bavaria and Austria and all various places that would have these, uh, what they call them, the Perchton Laufs or the Krampus Laufs of these basically parades of beast men clanking bells and terrifying away all the old evil spirits um, and protecting the towns, whereas others would march through and threaten to eat you and beat you. And you can actually buy tickets to get beaten. I was beaten one year. It sounds terrible, doesn't it? But. <laughs> I went down to Los Angeles, have a, a sort of a Krampus run. Um, and they sort of parade through the streets in downtown Los Angeles, which is scary in itself. You don't need a parade of monsters to be, right. you know, terrified and in danger, you know, down in downtown Los Angeles. Unfortunately, that's just sad the way it is. Um, but we braved it and we went down. And, and of course, I got lashed across the backside by a branch um by a krampus or a perch them as they're known and that's the other thing just to sort of cap that off people think that there's one krampus that that there's just a krampus much like people think there's a bigfoot um that there's one bigfoot and you know people don't seem to understand that it's actually many the krampus are many and there's there's uh so many different variations so many different looks and and even very on the name itself um is it is it Krampuses or Krampi? I, that's up for debate. <laughs> so Milwaukee, they do a Krampus night, uh, Krampus not, and they actually do a parade too. And it was so much fun. I went last year, and tons of people dress up like Krampus, and they have you know whips and the the twigs, and it's just really cool. I know they do it in like Pennsylvania too. Yeah, it's all over Europe, um, and it's sort of there's no real origin of Krampus that's the really fascinating part which is you know I think we were talking off air earlier about how you know whether I believe in actual cryptids as real things or not and and as I said it's a sort of a mixed bag and when you look at Krampus having its origins in a complete mystery there's no real one starting point as to where this character and it's very uh you know uh, unlimited variations came from um some say it's sort of you know the 12th century and Christianity was sort of carving its way across Europe and destroying pagans everywhere and replacing some of their gods with new variations to sort of attract them or or adopting and, and co-opting some of their creatures and characters and gift bringers uh, around the winter season into the Christian religion. And a lot of the practices from pagan or heathen, as they preferred, uh, would be sort of molded into that. And it's the same with Krampus. And now we sort of have a sort of this weird, blurry mystery origin as to where this character truly came from. Um, we, we just don't know. So, so just out of curiosity now, so the United States is sort of made up of people from all sorts of different countries, right? Especially like a lot of Europeans, you know, whatever, come over here and they, and, and it's known as the great melting pot and they bring this stuff with them. But like, why didn't a lot of those traditions survive here you're like like krampus only now is sort of becoming a thing again but like but why why hasn't it always been with us like what the hell happened yeah that's a good point i think just the commercialization of it the the melting pot in order to survive 
and become an American, you had to sort of give up a lot of things. And I think even today, a lot of people who come to the country will, on the one hand, uh, try and keep their identity, try and fly their own flags from their own original countries that they've come from to start a new life in America, which is great. You know, people should be proud of where they come from. But at the same time, they're very um, pressured into becoming uh, Americans in an American way. And they're stripped of a lot of their traditions and, and, and even the names are often changed. And there's of course stories going back where people would arrive by the thousands on the boats mm -hmm. entering the port of New York and um, they'd have to fill out an identity card and what have you to sort of become a citizen in the country way back before immigration is what it is today. And of course names would change because people couldn't pronounce them or spell them. And so things would be shortened or changed. And so from the get-go, the very names of people would be um, brutalized. And of course, a lot of their traditions and and uh, practices, I would assume a lot of them would maybe be a little bit apprehensive to even perform or practice because they couldn't find like-minded people around to to get on with it. And I think a lot of that has been lost because those communities were so uh, spread apart and just disenfranchised from each other that uh, more important things like bread on the table obviously took precedent. Um, you know, you have things like Necht Ruprecht and, you know, the Great Whipper and these sort of very dark Santa Claus. If you imagine Santa Claus covered in coal dust, um, carrying a big whip or sometimes a chain, there's, there's different names as well for those kind of characters, the gift bringers. And as I said earlier, they, they would enter these houses and they'd sort of you know, terrify children into behaving, which I think a lot of children today need. Um, I, you know, just really believe that. Um, I'm not saying that I condone beating children, but um, I think the fear of God is uh, certainly something that will make a child behave. And you don't even need to touch them, so long as they understand that there's a threat and that if they miss there are consequences, Believing in monsters and teaching them that there's a dark side to the world, I think is really important. And as you say, that seems to have been lost um, through, you know, the last hundred years even. But there are small pockets and small towns in the Dutch communities, you know, up around the New York area, Pennsylvania. They do sort of tend to have these little traditions still there under the, you know, uh, the guise of something else as part of a town parade. It's never really over the top as it is now. It seems to be coming back, as you said. So my name, my last name is Cram. Um, my family, my dad's side is from Austria. They came over late 1800s, but I scare my kids because I always tell them that it's short. My name is short for Krampus and I'm related to him. And so my kids freak out. And I don't know if that's a good parent or bad parent, but it works. Pretty sure that just makes you the fun parent. Yeah. I think you're telling the truth by saying that you're related because clearly the name comes from somewhere. So you must have some, you know, Krampus blood in me. Test. Have you done 23 and me to find out if you have I've done I've done ancestry, but it doesn't say I'm related to Krampus. Oh, that's a shame. But they don't know that. <laughs> I have I have absolutely no doubt that you're a monster. I, I've been told that many times. You're a treacherous, treacherous thing. Mr. Sam has said that too recently. <laughs> I've said no such thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's another thing with monsters that wear masks. Um, a lot of these traditional Christmas creatures, uh, a lot of the pretty women, the the Labafena, the, the the pretty witch, the good witch, um, they, uh, there was one called Tantari, Antari, and in France, and she would ride on a donkey all the way down to the, from, you know, the hillsides and from a cave. And a lot of these creatures lived in caves, but they would wear these disguises like a pretty face, much like yourself, Laura. Wow. Very pretty, beautiful face. But underneath, they were a treacherous monster. <laughs> Absolutely treacherous, treacherous, diabolical monster. I think it's time to end this interview. Uncongivable cruelty. Yeah. <laughs> a vicious vicious thing rude despicable <laughs> anyway let's talk about that one which i don't know what it was called but she like goes to your house and checks to make sure if your house is clean if not she like like cuts open your stomach and stuffs <laughs> all the clutter that's in your house what's that one called i know you drew it you sound worried <laughs> i am look at my room you can see behind me oh you haven't seen my place i'm in the middle of moving house and uh 
myself and my girlfriend are sort of surrounded by boxes and um, junk that we collect, everything from skulls to pieces of armor, and it's just a mess. Um, I see you have a raccoon in the back. Well, yeah, they're crawling through the walls. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, the purchaser, or, or uh, this, this sort of the, the witch, in a sense. There's very, um, very strange sort of variations on the tale. One of them was that this witch, um, or this this sort of uh, old lady, shall we say, this wisdom-filled old lady, was approached by the three magi, the three wise men, um, on, you know, the sort of the night of the birth of the Christ kind of thing. And they approached her and they said, hey, how you doing? We're, we're going to go we're gonna check out this 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 uh, son of God being born. You want to come along? You want to go? And she was sweeping and cleaning and she's like, no, you know what? I'd love to, but I've just, I've got so much to do, but thanks anyway. And she didn't go with them. And then when she, they sort of, you know, they just went off and did the thing with the donkey and whatever. Yeah. And um, she found out that it was the son of God and, and was then in a sense cursed or cursed herself and regretted it. And from that day on would go door to door looking for a newborn child, but at the same time, making sure the house was clean. And if it wasn't, as you say, you know, you're done for, you would either lose your fingers or she'd slice your belly open. And then she would stitch you back up with straw inside you and rocks inside you and all kinds of trash and whatnot. And there's other variations where she's simply a witch and she will crawl through your window and across your ceiling and drop onto your bed. And, you know, there's just so many different horrible versions that I think it is a sort of, um, you, in America, you have this thing called telephone. Um, mm -hmm. Someone will tell a story and, and the next person will hear it slightly different. So they'll tell it slightly differently. In the UK, we call that Chinese whispers. Um, it sounds racist. Uh, it probably is. Um, but at the same time, it makes sense because if someone's whispering in a foreign language, you're not going to make an exact copy of it when you try and tell that to someone else. So we have that in the UK. And I think that a lot of these old Christmas legends are very much in the same way as most folklore is when a story is passed on orally, it's going to be embellished slightly. It's going to be exaggerated. Maybe it's going to be, you know, the description might change to uh, fit the woman down the road. Uh, so to make it more real for those particular children in that particular town, maybe they'll even use her name. And so it, things adapt and things change. And I think that happens a lot, particularly with the creepy Christmas stuff when it's children involved, because um, how else do you scare a child without, you know, making it real? When when you were saying about how they would uh, potentially use the name of uh, someone local. I, th I think um, this is probably, this probably was a very sad day for Debbie Perchta. And I think that's probably what happened. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Poor Deb. And, 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 and honestly, thank God they went with Perchta instead of Debbie because Debbie's just not scary. It's just not scary. And what about Deborah? That's horrifying. I don't like that. And you drew her with like a beak, right? Like that's one of the variations. Well, one of the one of the other features is um, she has one leg, which is a goose's leg, which is also connected to sort of the, the witchcraft element of flight um, and the swan maiden and uh, the snow queen and being able to be young and old at the same time and to change into a, a swan um, or a goose, you know, the mother goose thing and the golden egg. It's all the same stories across the board. Little pieces of them turn up here and there. Um some uh, variations of the story, she's known as Iron Nose um, or the Beaked Lady, um, and some depict her with having an actual sort of bird's beak for a face instead of a nose. So the way I've illustrated it is I've given her a sort of a traditional, almost Disney-esque hooked nose um, for a, a more witchy appearance and, of course, a, a goose leg. And interestingly enough, uh, it was said that some witches would cover their bodies in goose fat they'd slime themselves up that's what i do it really moisturizes your skin yeah i can see it glistening on mm -hmm. you gross <laughs> <laughs> what about mary lude is that how you, that's how you say it right uh mary Luid, um or uh i'm sure i'm butchering it um my ex-girlfriend who's welsh would probably have a better stab at pronouncing that um that's that's another strange one that's sort of again, has its mystery origins in uh, ancient heathens and paganism and 
And where it really stems from, nobody particularly knows. And again, there's also variations on what that looks like. So for the modern um, enthusiast, it's uh, most often recognized um, as a, a, a horse's skull um, on a long pole with um, a sheet, almost like a, people dressing up as cheap as they can as a ghost under a sheet. Um, but they will carry the horse's head like a hobby horse and parade it around the town. Um, and if you've seen the movie The Wicker Man, when they have the little procession and everyone's wearing animal masks and there's a jester, kind of a joker character dressed up there that accompanies them, all of this would would be sort of a, a crowd of of people that would go from door to door, known as wassailers, um, which is carol singing, traditionally. Uh, it was called... With- but she raps, right? They rap to try and get in. They do, yeah. They have rap battles and um, you're... Can you give us a taste of that? You know, I don't. I couldn't even beatbox right now. My mouth is really dry. Uh, maybe at Christmas, though. That's the other thing, is, is you're not supposed to sing or play Christmas music out of season, so we'd be sort of dancing mm. a little bit of fate if we did that. But anyway, I digress. Um, yeah, we'll go, go door to door, knock on the door. Uh, they, they'd either encourage you to dance or sing, um, and then they would do their best efforts. And uh, if you just straight up refuse, they'd enter your house and steal things. And this all sort of marries very similar in a, in a way to um, the Saturnalia ancient Roman celebrations of winter uh, in the new year and the turnaround where uh, the sort of incredibly rich people would have their servants um, swap places where they would be uh, fed the food and the wine. And, and, and for one night only, you could have the role reversed. Um, I often wonder how many sort of just carried on and and didn't let them switch back after a while, you know, and just denied it. Probably a very terrifying time, but um, it's the same sort of thing where they would also just take advantage of the situation. They'd have all the food and all the wine and they just enter, you know, whose ever house they w- wanted to dressed as the, the leaders and the Lords of the land. Um, and Marie Le Weird, the, the sort of the gray mare, this almost zombie horse that is uh, very, beautiful and pretty and magical at the same time it has ribbons and and bells on it and there's uh, even though it's a dead horse you know it's a a horse's skull at the same time it's it's full of life and it's almost mocking death in a way that you just you can't can't stop this you know it's like the terminator (laughs) absolutely can't (laughs) stop now sandwich don't you see mary popping up more i feel like i've been seeing her in the last couple of years. Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, Mary Mary Louis. I don't I, I don't know if mm-hmm. I pronounced that correctly. Uh yeah, I mean she's a she, yeah, that's another one that I I think people I mean and maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But I feel like so Krampus kind of opened the door for people cuz everyone knows Krampus now and that's sort of like mm-hmm. opened the door but now I think people are kind of hungry to see what the hell else is there. What else he got? Like and they're kind of cuz even like I've seen Gryla popping up. Yeah. Like, Gryla? It's like now, granted, I have not seen her stupid sons pop up yet. What are their names? Oh, yeah, they all got these weird names. I don't know. Like, I don't know if something got lost in translation or whatever. But like, their names are all like, like door slammer and sausage stealer and butt sniffer and leg humper and spoon licker and like panty dropper or something. I don't know. I honestly, I don't know. I lose track. I don't know. Yeah, Gryla and her thirteen sons, um, and her husband and her cat. Um, a really strange family of trolls. Now, isn't the cat Yule Cat? Yeah, Yola um, Cataran. It's a weird name. I don't know. Uh, it, it's one of those where it's depicted differently from tail to tail. Most often, it's described as a sort of an Icelandic wild cat with stripes, whereas other tales will describe it as giant and black. And other tales will describe it as a troll type of cat with horns. So again, there's variations on the tale there. But um, that was a pet owned by Gryla. Um, Gryla herself kept a list, much like Santa Claus, of all the naughty children. Um, and she would, you know, crawl down the mountain uh, around Christmas time, and she would collect all the naughty children in a big sack and haul them back up the mountain into her cave, and they'd they'd be thrown into a, a big cauldron and she'd cook them in a stew and feed her 13 sons, which were all trolls. 
And as uh, as Sam Squatch was there saying, they they all do have different names. Each one of them has a sort of it's almost like the Seven Dwarves in a way. Mm-hmm. Each have a different role um, of mischief and annoyance. One would slam a door. One one would uh, bang pots and pans. One would steal sausages. Um, very very folklore, Grimm's fairy tale kind of vibe with those trolls. Uh, but you don't really see much of those. It, it's uh, it's a very um, touristy kind of thing if you go to iceland they're everywhere you know you can get key rings with them on and that kind of thing um but the cat the yule cat is kind of terrifying and it it sort of it goes along the lines of of scaring uh people and children into um production during the winter more than anything else um to make sure that everybody had enough warm clothes to wear they would say that this giant cat would eat you if you didn't have any new clothes um so you know the 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 idea would be that if you're walking through the forest and you're wearing an old sweater from last year this cat's going to eat you but if you've got a brand new one or if you've made one yourself or if your grandmother's made one for you then you're safe and it's a sort of uh, somehow the cat would know (laughs) and and that would simply be a a kind of a, a a creepy tale to encourage people to get to the spinning wheel and just make more warm clothes really just to ensure that everybody was warm for the winter. Um, but who knows? Maybe maybe it did exist. Maybe it still does. Well, and, and you know, I'm just going to take a moment here and say, hey, kids, when your grandma gave you those socks and underwear, she was saving <laughs> your life. Okay? So just remember that. So true. So your Yule cat is this big black cat with fangs and the red eyes. How do you decide what to draw like Hackman doesn't have stripes or is it just on a whim you're like it's going to be all black <laughs> well i i think the idea of of the black panther um having its sort of connections to cryptozoology and the mystery big cat phenomenon mm-hmm. that we have um that's a that's a big interest of mine i've seen one of the mystery big cats myself in the uk i had uh, a, an encounter many years ago i think it was around 2000 four perhaps it's you know 20 years ago nearly um but uh yeah we were driving through a country lane in the northwest of england at night and a big black panther uh leaps over a farm fence and scoots itself very graciously flowingly across the road right in front of the car and then jumps up and with such ease floated over the next farm field hedgerow and and away it was gone into the night and um i called the uh the national bigfoot uh bigfoot the national big cat rather um society that was uh following these kind of reports up and down the the uk and they called me back a few hours later after i'd given them all the information and they said oh yeah yeah um he's been seen in the area a number of times over the last three years you've definitely seen one and that just thrilled me that these big black monster cats are out there in the UK and that I had seen one. An old lady um had actually photographed it uh drinking from the pond in the in in the local farm area. It had just come down for a little drink and she got a photograph of this sweet little old lady. Um so that was a real thing. And so to do the Yule cat as a big black creature, uh which you know some of the legends do describe it as a as a giant black cat. Um, it just seemed more fitting and more ferocious and for me, more realistic. Is that why you were all black to be ferocious? And to be realistic. Yes. It's understandable. I love it. Yeah. But yeah. You know, I gotta say, I am kind of shocked. Like when I was going through all of them here and maybe I missed it, but I did not see Van Trapp. Van Trapp? Yeah. The killer Scarecrow. Well, you're going to talk about the sound of music. <laughs> no, the killer Scarecrow. I'm like, how the hell did we miss that? Well, there's a number. There's a number of characters that I've yet to do, and and it's funny because you think that you would run out eventually. That there's only so many of them, um, and there really is. Just, I mean, at the moment in the list of the sketchbook that I have, I've cataloged at least two hundred that I've yet to get to. Wow. Uh, I've, I mean, I've done I think forty at this point, um, and there's just so many more to come. And so, uh, yeah, Von Trapp's on the list. Um, is what Pete's on the list now. That's an interesting one because that's um, a man of African origin um, who was paraded around uh, in chains 
but also as a, as he was the he was the Krampus of the Dutch people in the Netherlands. They would have a a uh, Santa Claus uh, who would parade the streets, and his companion was Swart Pete, which was a black chap wearing almost a jester costume. Um, but that was their version of Krampus, and so you can see how it sort of changes from from country to country, and yet. People have said to me, oh, you shouldn't, you shouldn't illustrate that. You know, it's racist. It's very frowned upon these days. And yet I would say that it's, it's a piece of history. And as awful as it may be perceived, if it's done tastefully and in the correct way to uh, portray a piece of history, then I think that's acceptable. And it's, it shouldn't be ignored and it shouldn't be erased. Is, is that the one where uh, I believe they uh, still to this day, they, they dress up in blackface? They do. Uh, that. That's the odd part. Um, in the Netherlands, in Holland, they they certainly do. Uh, as far as I'm aware, in certain areas, they will do parades, and there will be people who will dress up as them and do blackface. Um, and again, it's not to make fun of people of color; it's to simply represent somebody. Uh, people would say that it's you know misrepresentation and that it's offensive, and I completely understand. Um, but at the same time, it's also uh, allowing this legend to continue and to give them a piece uh, of history that, you know, is very real. People owned people, and it's very wrong. But it is part of your history, not Bigfoot history. We, 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 we didn't do that shit. That's monstrous. Oh, my God. You guys are horrible. But 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 God bless. I, I'm just so glad. Just so glad we're past that. But dear God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, Mr. Sam, you also drew your own made up characters part of these creepy christmas can you tell us about that uh yeah um there's a few uh and there's a few yet to be revealed uh one of them is the weg the penguin <laughs> yes a a giant prehistoric penguin which uh here's a really interesting thing this this is what got me if you think about penguins in christmas uh they sort of uh they appear in various movies and animated films and you know, uh, all kinds of stories and children's books. But the truth is, there are no penguins in the Northern Hemisphere. There just aren't any. There are no penguins in the North Pole. There's no penguins above the equator. The nearest you'll get is New Zealand. And um, that's not exactly north. But there are fossils of giant penguins. And it's almost like um, an H.B. Lovecraft story in the Mountains of Badness where they have these giant strange monstrous penguins coming out of caves and i thought wouldn't it be wonderful to add this to the sort of lexicon of cre creepy christmas monsters to include this um prehistoric giant penguin and call it the weg so uh, i'm currently writing a story about the weg um but that's one of them uh, others include rabid rudolph which is simply uh, a play on Cujo, stephen king cujo whereas this is a reindeer that uh, is bitten by um some kind of rabid infected animal and uh turns monstrously unstoppable um so he's part of it too and santa claus but you know that's that's one that's been floating around a lot of people's mouths for a while some would say anti-claus i believe uh kevin smith at one point was making a movie called anti-claus uh shortly after the krampus movie came out um i don't know whether that's still going to come to fruition but i'd like to see it i love kevin smith uh, mm -hmm. but i did you know create my own little uh, vision, my own portrayal of what I would call Santa Claus uh, with the, you know, C-L-A-W-S. Um, because it just- And Mrs. And Mrs. Claus, yeah. Well, see, Mrs. Claus I've not seen anywhere, so I thought I'd have to add her. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's one of those things that uh, it's too tempting to not create things um, in the world of Christmas. <laughs> I, I was a big fan of the wreath wraith. I uh that one. Yeah. That's yeah, I I like that one. That sort of stems from uh, Victorian ghost stories as well. It's uh it's sort of um it's meant to sort of invoke the 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 haunting of a house rather than an actual creature. Um and so it's it's a it's a tricky one to sort of play with. And then of course you have the idea of inanimate objects like toys being possessed by evil spirits um that's that's an endless um joy <laughs> <laughs> horrific little monster toys um 
but yeah there's there's a whole bunch of creatures that uh, have yet to be portrayed the christmas angel was was an interesting one um there's more of a based on greek mythology with the harpies um and giving it that uh mythological vibe tying in the sort of greek legends and there are christmas greek le legends of goblins um and trolls as well in that region that uh live underground so you did a lot of trolls for this set I did. I I even did a snow troll itself, like a, just a straight up big old Norwegian snow troll. Um, I love them. I think they're they're endlessly brilliant. There's um, a, a very famous uh, fairy and troll fae folk illustrator, Brian Froud. I'm sure a lot of people will be very familiar with him. He did the. Uh, he's probably best known for the Dark Crystal and Labyrinth with David Bowie. Uh, those movies um he designed all of the sort of the pod people and the gulflings and the sexies and all of the fey creatures and he he has a number of books out wonderful illustrator absolutely beautiful artwork and uh he's illustrated trolls in a particular way um a lot of his mystics from the dark crystal have this very sort of long nose long haired troll kind of appearance and someone had said um his work was very similar to another artist who was very famous for doing trolls and, and Brian Froud uh, didn't back down from it. Um, he, he wasn't, he wasn't necessarily being directly accused of copying, but he, he answered with a simple, and it was really a beautiful idea for, for children to hear more than anything else. And he said, well, the reason I draw them that way is because that's what they look like. And so he was defending both the other artist and himself. Uh, which I thought was beautiful. I like that. So the polar bear, the polar bear, the, I'm sorry, I, I'm going to, I'm going to do my best. Try here. and say it. Corn gar suck. Torn gar suck. I don't know if I got that right or not. Torn gar suck. Yeah. Um, Torn gar suck. That? What is that? That's an, uh, as far as I understand is a, an Inuit legend. Um, it can take the form of a person uh, much like, you know, a, a number of, First Nations and Native American legends and Inuit legends uh, of spirit animals or um, gods of their pantheon who'd take the form of both a man uh, or an animal to talk to you. Um, and Tongasuk was one of them. Um, and I had originally written a story about a giant polar bear. And I'd originally given him one eye and called him Odin. And... I decided to change that and do a little bit more digging on whether there were, in fact, any legends of polar bears in general. And that's how I dis discovered Tongasuk, which uh, completely blew me away, being a far more terrifying idea of a, a, a god that will, you know, punish you. <laughs> um, so I turned him into a ferocious, gigantic polar bear um, that's ripping presents apart because, of course, that's what he would do. Sounds like sandwich over here. <laughs> no, I do that in a heartbeat. Hey, if it's something good, maybe that might that might rip it apart. Um, well, I was you know I was just curious because a, a, a while back I'd seen a um, it was a show called The Terror, and it had it was a TV show called The Terror based on a book, and it had this polar bear god thing in it. Um, but uh, so I did a little more digging, and apparently there was numerous polar bear like legend monsters. Um, but I was curious if the author of that didn't wasn't because he had claimed that his his version was sort of a, an amalgam of stuff. But I was curious if that wasn't somewhat based on, you know, perhaps even this legend of because it was a polar bear with a, a half human face. I got to tell you right now, fucking disturbing to see, but it was, it was a damn good show. Yeah, I believe at one point um, he either has a human leg or one of his four paws is a human arm. Um, is sort of half man or partially man, which is incredibly disturbing. I'm always fascinated by the the hybrid of uh, humans and animals that crop up the world over in, in every folklore. It makes you wonder what's going on there. Okay, so Mr. Sam, what is if you had to pick one, which one is your favorite? That is a tricky one. Um, <laughs> I mean, I have a soft spot for the wag. Um, I do uh, quite like the idea of a prehistoric giant penguin. Um, I think, hmm, 
the giant narwhal is also quite cute. Um, so cute. Yeah, I I think Clausen is quite quite a fr- a, a friendly looking, almost Wookie Bigfoot type Krampus species, if you want to call it that. Um, and it's another one of these variations from another part of Europe of these giant whitish gray, um, almost marshmallow man size monsters with various multiple horns and uh, a switch or a branch that would whip people and, you know, chains and whips and things. Sounds like something else I'm, you know, trying to be excited about there, but that's not why I like them. Um, they just look monstrous and they will beat you and torture you. And and there's something about a gigantic Sasquatch-like horned creature barreling down the street, um, kidnapping children and and beating badly behaved men uh, to be fascinating. You know, it needs to happen more often, I think. I, I, I got to say, I did, I did really like that one. The big, Just because he reminded me of my grandpa, <laughs> you know, just the big gray, hairy. It, was, it just reminded me of my grandpa. He also used to beat the shit out of me. But beyond that, it, you know what? It, it, they were a different generation. It was fine. <laughs> but how else was I going to learn? All right, come on. So, Sandwich, are you going to get gray hair soon? Like, what's going on? I feel like you haven't aged. No, I got no, no. I get my hair dyed. Everyone knows that. Oh, okay. Yeah, it, it costs a fortune, an absolute fortune. But, but if I didn't, oh my god, I would be as white as snow. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Good to know. I think I uh, I turned forty and uh, I stopped dyeing my hair. So that was it. Used to have black hair. You know, I was one of those goth kids. And uh, then I just thought, oh, I've I've got white hairs coming through. I'll just let them go. So the past year. I've really uh, embraced it. I, I don't see a gray hair on that head. I know. I was going to say your hair still looks black. Are you plucking them? What's going on? I mean, I mean. Really? That's like three gray hairs. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not seeing it. Right, they're there. All right. <laughs> a little bit the temples. It looks very distinguished, but maybe. Yeah. Got a bit of the Doctor Strange going on. There's worse things to be compared to. Someone sent me a picture of Bear Grylls who'd been stung by bees and he looked like Benedict Cumberbatch. I haven't seen that. I'll send it to you. <laughs> All right. So your Wendigo is terrifying with those big glowing eyes. Yeah. Again, there's another creature that has a multitude of endless variations. Uh, probably the most popular depiction these days is is what almost looks like a zombie stag minor. T- you know, half half man, half elk or stag with giant antlers and a stag's head. Um, the way I've portrayed him is a sort of a mixture of that and uh, generally a giant troll cannibal. The legend that I was most, most familiar with was um, the idea that a Wendigo, no matter how much it eats, it will grow in size and then it's hungry again because the ratio remains the same, regardless of how much it will consume it's still forever hungry. And so it's this ravenous cannibalistic creature, um, which stems from, uh, you know, a lot of very real um, situations in Canada and North America uh, where you'd have Native Americans with rabies or they'd be, you know, in a situation where tribes would be starving or it'd be a particularly bad winter. And this awful uh, disease would turn people into ravenous, crazed individuals. As the story would go, uh, they would then be known as the cursed Wendigo, and they'd be sort of ostracized from the tribe or left out to die in a cave somewhere. And they'd go mad and, you know, die, sadly. But um, there's so many variations of, of that beyond what could be a very real explanation for it. Um, and it's everything from you know, what we would call demonic possession in the West, I suppose, but uh, spiritual possession, dark energies, uh, you know, entities that were never human that would take over the body. Absolutely terrifying concepts that um, the dark winter would bring and consume people's imagination with. And the Wendigo is just, as I say, an endless source of horror. So so when it comes to the like the the dark creepy christmas stuff I kind of feel like you've planted your flag. I mean you've you've claimed this. This is your land now. And so so my my my, my question is this. Have you noticed 
an uptick in interest in this sort of stuff just sort of over you know overall i mean because it feels like it's kind of catching on more and more like it's becoming more mainstream yeah yeah i have noticed that um and it's it's good and bad for me because as you say it's um it's very much a part of it's an all-consuming obsession of mine um and has been for for a number of years um and i i do sort of feel as though i've um I have sort of planted a flag in a way, sort of a beacon to say, you know, welcome to this world. Let me be your guide. Um, but at the same time, without sounding pretentious, it's good in a bad way to see other films covering the Christmas legend. And and uh, it will bring more people towards my world. But at the same time, if it's done badly, if it's a bad film, then it's going to turn people off this subject entirely. There's a number of horror films um, that have come out in the last, couple of years that have a christmas theme um that are not as um folkloric or or monster legendary driven or as accurate as as i will try and do it. and that's one thing that i do try and bring to the table is pieces of history i will exaggerate embellish and invent my own characters but at the same time the ones that i do portray i try and keep them as accurate as possible and include easter eggs in there everywhere as much as i can to link them all together whereas some films will just um They'll just discount it. Uh, I mean, the movie Krampus, um, it it was an enjoyable film. I do I do love that that movie, but the character itself was not Krampus. That's just not what Krampus is. Um, it was particularly inaccurate. Um, and yet, at the same time, you'll have there's a, there's another film that's coming out um, this Christmas, I believe, and it's it's called uh, It's a Wonderful Knife, which is a, a play of <laughs> It's a Wonderful Life. Um, where in the original, um, you know, he'd make a wish uh, that he never existed. And it was just an, an awful, sad story uh, that makes you cry, but it's beautiful in the end. And this one is a similar thing where the character makes a wish that they didn't exist, except horrific things happen. So I'm quite excited that people are getting more interested and in tapping into the you know, the sort of endless resource of, of Christmas. But um, for what I'm doing, and, you know, I'm, I'm currently writing my own book based on all of this and my own fictional stories, um, all I'll say is in, in in the realm of entertainment, just watch this space because I, I feel as though I haven't even started yet. So how do you have time to do all this research plus draw plus do all this other, you know, book covers and write your story where do you find the time for all of this you don't sleep do you well i don't have children um so that's that's one thing that i know at some point is going to change um i'm very fortunate that i don't have to look after other people um i'm very free with that uh, friends of mine that i went to school with they all have children most of them do anyway and i see so much of their life taken up by that and it's not a bad thing it's just a different situation and so with me is i'm uh i'm like a big child myself so i'm really just looking after myself um and i have a wonderful girlfriend who you know helps me out with everything as well but um it's a situation where there are times where i'll think there is not enough time in the day i'll maybe get about four hours sleep a night uh generally on average and um yeah i never stop I never stop. Um, you know, it's it's a case of if you want something enough, you just keep making it happen. You just find the time and you make it happen. Some great advice right there. I, say, I, I believe it was, it was a Da Vinci who used to like sleep for 20 minutes and then just work and then sleep for 20 minutes and then work. And he just kept doing that until he just went crazy. I think that I think that's how I'm pretty sure that's how that story ends. Are you saying he's going crazy? No. No, I'm just saying, I'm just saying the shit catches up eventually. Jesus Christ, look out. <laughs> Hold on one second. I have incredibly noisy neighbors. I don't know if you can hear them. They, speaking of children, have just come home and they tend to stomp around. So if it gets noisy, let me know. I can't hear anything. Can I'm repeat. used to the sounds of children screaming, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah, I. in terms of time, um, I often say that I wish I had a time machine with a pause button so that I could just get all of my stuff done and then press unpause. Um, because again, there's just, there is not enough time in the day. 
I'm as I say, I'm writing a book, uh, thirteen stories. Um, I'm doing all this artwork for various authors uh, and movie projects, um, and it just never ends. Uh, and I draw live, and I, you know, do other things. And it's just the day is filled from six a.m. till four a.m. <laughs> and yet you found time to talk to us. You fool! Oh my God, you could have got so much done. You could have got so much done. <laughs> what a waste. All right, sandwich. What else? Look, I, you, you know, look, I'm I'm just in awe that I even get to talk to the guy. So, I mean, this is amazing. I mean, look, I mean, look, I have I have been I have been a fan for quite some time. Likewise, you know, and I, I mean, just the the especially like um, the David Weatherly books. My God, like I gotta say, when, when it comes to 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 the cryptid art, you do us justice. I appreciate it. Yeah, uh, D- David's a wonderful guy. Um, I've been creating book covers for him for more than a decade now. Um, I think we have over twenty books between us. Um, I forget. I literally lost count. Um, but uh, I did a book cover for him, Strange Intruders, way back. Um, and then after that, he, you know, he said, "Oh, I'm doing a a, a Bigfoot book, a Sasquatch kind of collection of." Uh, various different experts on the subject would come together. And I think it's on volume five now. Uh, Woodnox, yes. Yeah. And I wrote a chapter uh, with my own theories on your family. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much. And I think that's volume four. Um, but yeah, and then the the monster series, he, he decided uh, to do a state, which I thought at the time was strange. I, I, I guess I thought, oh, well, maybe he's just from there originally or just loves the state itself um and i i believe it was the nevada uh silver state i think um and it was just a book of monsters cryptids and legends and we did that and then he did a follow-up arizona copper state and then i thought oh i see that where this is going um and we're now uh 15 or 16 books in again i forget the number but the idea is to do all 50 states uh and it's it's really it's a tough one because we can only do so many per year because of course david has to do the research and the writing and then i have to carve out the time to do the artwork for the book cover which is the front and back will always have a monster on the front and a monster on the back or several and there's always a sasquatch hidden somewhere on the back um on every book and uh and at the end of it once once all 50 are done which will probably be in, you know, five or maybe 10 years time from now. It probably really will be 10 years time from now. I'll be 55. Um, David keeps joking. You know, he hopes he's still around. Um, I do too. And then eventually I'll, I will release a book, which will be just the cover artwork. Um, (laughs) Yeah. So that'll be fun. I'll I'll have David write the forward for that book. Um, because it's sort of, you know, it would only make sense, wouldn't it? Yes. <laughs> that's full circle. That's that's fantastic. Ooh. I have in my hands the Texas one because that's where I'm from. I love this one. And then I think, you know, we've we've talked about maybe releasing a box set, but it'll be really hard to market that because it would be so large. I'm not sure that's possible. It'd be like five feet wide. It'd be, it'd be ridiculous. I you know what? And you would buy it at any price. Yeah, damn right I would buy it. Are you kidding me? I'd buy it in a heartbeat. You're such a fan. So, so I was lucky enough to actually meet David Weatherly uh, at the van, at Van me, at Van Meter. Me too. And uh, and he explained to me that it that he intended to eventually uh, to do all fifty states or whatever. And I looked at him and said, "Well, good luck finding something for Minnesota because that's where I'm from." And he looked he looked me dead in the eye and he laughed in my goddamn <laughs> face. And you know what? I respected him for doing it. But and he said, "You know what? You're not the first person to say that to me." You know, and I said, I'm not a person at all, David Weatherly. I'm a Bigfoot. <laughs> and then we laughed. It was great. It was a good time. Mr. Sam, where can people find you? Well, um, I can be found everywhere. Everywhere. Um, under the bed. The Probably the best place to find me would be my website, uh, which has all the links that you would want. Uh, you know, the Facebook, the Twitter, the Patreon, the YouTube, uh, the print store, all of that jazz um, is all on uh, Mr. Sam Sheeran. 
com, and that's Mr. The Word, M-I-S-T-E-R, Sam, and then S-H-E-A-R-O-N.com. Uh, go over there and follow all the social medias and what have you. And uh, and yeah, I draw live every Wednesday, so if you want to hang out and have a chat and uh, maybe even suggest something for me to draw, um, I'm there too. That's part of your Patreon. That is part of my Patreon, yeah. Um, which in turn helps me buy pencils and erasers or rubbers, as we call them in the UK. I was waiting for, for uh, Sam Squatch to say something. I'm not touching that with a 10 foot pole, which, by the way, is exactly how long that rubber would need to be. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, you left it wide open. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> oh, dear me. Oh, different yeah. kind of pencil but still plenty of lead so. oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear this has become quite graphite oh. <laughs> you too it is a shame you don't have kids because that was a goddamn 10 out of 10 on a dad joke scale. That was perfect. Perfect. <laughs> All right. So tell us what else you're working on besides that uh, 13 tales. Oh, goodness me. That is a, that is a great question. What else am I working on? Um, I'm working on a, apart from my 13 tales. Yeah. My Christmas book, which is set for release in 2025. Um, we're going with a, hopefully a, a big publisher um rather than straight to amazon um and so that takes time uh unfortunately but it also is good because that means i can really get it edited nice and lovely um and aside from that yeah i'm i'm illustrating various books ongoing um as i mentioned i just did a new book cover for luke phillips and his um beast series and this one's about a bigfoot it's called rogue um that should be out shortly in time for Halloween. Um, and I believe it's uh, Bob Gimlin's birthday or was in the last 24 hours. So yeah. it's a good time. It's the same birthday as me, the 18th of October. Go, yeah. yeah, small world. Um, and aside from that, a few, uh, you know, books here and there for David Weatherly when we can slot them in when he's, he's ready. Um, and that's about it. My mind has actually gone blank. It's almost as though it's a defense mechanism to to have a break from the work by not thinking about it. <laughs> so why don't you just tell us all about it then? <laughs> let's just let's just drag you right through that mire one more time. No, I, I can't even remember. <laughs> no, for the most for the most part, it's uh, it's a case of wrapping up as many projects as possible in order to um, focus on the writing and then the the next round of Christmas artwork, including the playing cards, which are due out next year which is an entire set of creepy christmas playing cards oh, that's fantastic i love that i love that idea were you working on a tarot set or are you still planning on that yeah uh that's another one of those things where i i will have uh maybe five or six different clients on the go and maybe three or five million of my own projects on the table and then i'll have another idea and i'll say oh i really want to do that um and then that sort of you know, sits there for a minute. Um, I usually spend a good month doing the research and the planning for it and then realize that I just simply have to put that to the side for the minute. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the, the tarot thing, it was up in the air because originally I was going to do a creepy Christmas tarot. Ooh. And I still want to do that. Um, and I already have, you know, enough characters to, to cover that. But at the same time, I, I wouldn't want to repurpose what I've already done. I'd rather create something fresh and new. Then I thought, well, I'd like to do a cryptozoology tarot, and then I'd like to do simply a traditional, accurate, loyal tarot to what it should be. So there's three tarots there already that I'm thinking, well, I'd love to do that. I'd love to do one on ghosts as well, but um, these things take time. Find more time. You, you will be happy to know that uh, my buddy, the Jackalope, uh, this this Halloween, he is going as uh, your painting, the Baffalope. Uh, he he is he is obsessed with it. You know, oh. he, he's like, oh my god, that's like me. Is like if I was evil, I'm like, you are evil, you fucking little weirdo. But he, uh, yeah, he loves that thing. That's like his favorite. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. 
Yeah, that's another uh, series for the cards, um, for the creepy Christmas cards, is is the uh, the Merry Cryptids, um, which hopefully will be out next year. Uh, and the Jackalope is actually in there as one of the Christmas, uh, a Christmas horned bunny. <laughs> And the Mothman, of course, which you know, let's let's remind ourselves, the Mothman itself took place at Christmas time. The Point Pleasant legend, uh, you know, it's a very sad tale, but the Mothman was seen around Christmas time. And when the Silver Bridge collapsed, there were talk of uh, Christmas presents floating down the river, which is really sad and horrific. But uh, the Mothman will be included in the Christmas series as well. Very cool. Yeah, not like that guy gets enough attention. That's fine. That's fine. Everyone loves Moth, man. And the Yeti, you know, which isn't white, uh, as most people would commercially think. Uh, as we know, the Yeti uh, is either black, red, or brown. Um, but if it's covered in snow, he might appear white. But he's not generally white, unless he's incredibly old. Yeah, you have uh, Rankin Bass to blame for that. That whole, uh, <laughs> the bumble yes. from Rudolph. That's, that's where that shit comes yeah. from. Yeah, and now he's forever white in commercial television. Racist. Yeah. All right. Well, it's been a pleasure talking to you tonight. Thank you so much for carving time out to talk to us idiots. Well, thank you so much. It's an absolute blast. Thank you so much. It was great to finally get to speak to you. I know I know we talk sometimes on Instagram and stuff. So it was kind of nice. It was nice. Yeah, absolute pleasure. Thank you for the invite and uh, I must do it again. Uh, I love what you're doing and um, have a great creepy Christmas. All right. Happy holidays. Wow. You know, I got to say, that Mr. Sam yes. Sheeran, as disturbing yes. as his art is, mm -hmm. he is a lovely man. You know what? He's Very a lovely. lovely guy. I I love talking to that guy. That was fantastic. And, and I feel his bad. His art is very dark, but yes. he's very talented. And yes. he knows a lot about Creepy Christmas. Yeah. He's got dark art, but a beautiful soul. And I think that's what's important here. Don't judge a book by its cover. Very... Uh, I wasn't. Oh, I did. Well, I, look, I wasn't saying a word. I'm sorry if that came off harsh. You, that's not what I meant. You did. You're judging me. A little bit. Maybe. And I wasn't even judging him. Because he's my friend, Sam. I don't judge Ooh. my friends. You're friends with Mr. Sam Sheeran. I am friends yes, with someone who is friends with Mr. Sam Sheeran. You know, I gotta tell you. Consider yourself lucky. I do. You know what? I do. This is fantastic. I love this. This is this is awesome. You know what? You uh you went up a couple notches in my uh in my wow. cool, in my coolness scale, you just went up a couple notches. Good for you. Thank you. you. Yeah. So Sam, you know, we're yeah. talking about the holidays. What are you doing yes. for New Year's Eve? I mean, are you going to go dancing? Do you celebrate with friends? No. I celebrate the same way I do every year. I pop open a thing of uh pop open a thing of champagne, you know? Mm -hmm. And then uh, I scare uh, neighborhood kids, you know? Just look at their windows like, ah, Okay. Ah, 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 it's good fun. Yeah, it makes me laugh. What are you doing? Do you do it at midnight? You know, sometimes. You know, sometimes I will. But, uh, you know, honest okay. to God. You could scare them any goddamn time. And most, most little kids go to bed way before midnight. But honest to God, you, <laughs> you could scare the shit out of people anytime, and it feels just as good. It really does. Maybe I'll join you sometime. Yeah, that's fun. You're just like, ah! And then they're, yeah, they're just screaming. Ah. That's fun. And then you make sure you get out of there so when their family comes, there's nobody there, and they're just like, ah, quit screwing around. It's Oh, my God. It's so much fun. Oh, oh shoot. Yeah. Shoot, Sam, What's I hear on? my doorbell ringing. Oh. My family is here. Okay, okay, okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Here's what you do. Get yourself a big pot. Put it on the stove. Turn it up on high. Fill it with oil, okay? And now, bring that shit to a boil. That's what you're going to want to do. What? Right? Then, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, what you do... What kind of recipe is this? It's not a recipe, Laura. This is a life-saving <laughs> tactic, okay? So what you do is, <laughs> then you bring that oil to a boil. You go over, you whip that door open, throw that shit right in their face, okay? And they'll scatter like rats. Sam, and it, it's gonna oh my save God. Your ass. What? What's going on? What? I invited them over for Christmas dinner. I want them here. Oh. Oh. Well, I'm sorry. I, I totally Unreal. misread that. I totally misread that. That's on me. Oh. Sam, I'm do sorry. you want to come over for Christmas dinner? With your family? Yeah. Oh. 
What? You got something against my family? No, 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 they're great. They're great. Uh, what, what, what okay. do you guys, what do, what do you, what are you having? Well, we have mashed potatoes. Ooh, all right. I think we have some sort of apple pie. <gasps> oh, yeah. And Brussels sprouts. Oh, and you like Brussels sprouts. Yeah. What, what was that? What, what was the last Rolls. Like, what was the last, what would you say before rolls? What was that? <laughs> Turkey? Yeah, I'm out. I'm not coming. What? Nah. Nah, not a fan. Why? Not a fan. Because, because turkey is for Thanksgiving. Goose. Goose. That's what you have on Christmas. Goose. Christmas the goose. What's a goose? I don't know. People celebrating Christmas. Christmas goose. Thanksgiving. So now you're Thanks- not coming? You're not coming to Christmas dinner that I just invited you to? No. That's kind of rude. You're supposed to spend it with the people that you love. I am. I'm spending it with myself. I, I, I can't think of anyone I love more. <laughs> wow. I, yeah. Look, I got this whole thing okay. figured out. I'm gonna I'm gonna scare the neighborhood kids and you know like get their parents to think of their think they're nuts. It was a whole thing. I'm doing a whole thing. All right, fine. I'm uninviting you. <gasps> how yeah. dare you? you? You know what? You know what? No, you how know, dare you? You know what? I'm gonna you know what? Hold on, hold on. See this? I'm taking some what? of these presents. I'm taking some of these presents of the package I was sending you. I'm taking them out. They're there. Look at that. <gasps> up, up, you're not getting this one or this one or that one. Ha ha. What do you think of that? I'm not gonna send you anything. <gasps> How dare you? How dare you? Nothing? Nothing. You don't deserve it. After all I've done for you. How dare you? Wasting my time. Oh, I'm wasting your time? Oh, oh. Well, strap in, sister, because I got a few things to get off my chest, all right? (laughs) Oh, man. Let's hear them. Number one. Number one. Go ahead. Let's do this before the new year. Yeah, mm-hmm. you were supposed to call Nathaniel Leonard, not me. What? That's number one. No, because uh-uh. no, he's a human being, and there's no way in hell I would ever talk to a human being. <laughs> so there you go. That's number one. You're talking to me. Number two, Mr. Sam Sheeran. I know exactly who he is, and you treated me like a moron. I know who he is. And you made me do that stupid Ed Sheeran joke. It made me look like an idiot, a fool. Okay, what else, Mr. Ungrateful? Yes. Yeah, I am ungrateful. I'm ungrateful for the uh, the constant abuse at your hands. Fine. You know what? I hope I hope tonight you are visited by three Christmas ghosts. Three Christmas ghosts. And I hope they show you the error of your ways. <laughs> and then you're going to go to your window. You're going to be like, boy, what day is it? The boy's going to be like, what? You'll be like, what day is it? You'll be like, it's Christmas day. And, he'll, and you'll be like, then it's not too late. And then you'll throw him a big bag of money or something. Be like, go down to the supermarket. Go get the biggest Christmas goose. Goose, Laura. <laughs> and you'll tell him to bring it to my house. And I'll accept it. It's your apology. Thank you. Sam, you're unbelievable. I will get a ham delivered to you. I do like ham. That sounds pretty good, too. I will take a ham. Thank you. I will also take a ham. I got to go. Can we just roll the credits? God bless us, everyone. You can find us at creepyacres.com and you can listen to us wherever you get your podcasts. Also YouTube and we're on the socials, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, which is now called X, Threads, and we have merch at tpublic.com. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks for listening, everybody. And as always, hey, keep it creepy. (laughs) Ha, 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 ha.